Hello folks and welcome back to Star Citizen. So this time I finally got, uh, I mentioned this a few episodes ago, I was uh, working on getting all the different alien reproduction ships to uh, mess around with and I finally have them all. And then some. So I'll bring you up to uh, speed on the ships I bought since the last video and uh, then I'll show you uh, the ship we're going to take out first. So just a uh, quick disclaimer, this is not like a review or guide or tutorial or anything like that. I've just uh, picked these things up and upgraded them over the last few weeks and uh, I'm just going to take them out and mess around with them, do some missions with them of uh, varying types, have some fun. Okay, so uh, one of the new ones I picked up is the Aegis Retaliator, which is um, it's a really interesting ship. It's, uh, it's not really the best thing to use solo, but it does have six, I believe six, size nine torpedoes. So it's definitely heavy hitting. Kind of uh, sucks to use solo because the pilot has no actual guns. I also got the Anvil Valkyrie, which is one that I've killed hundreds of times doing these group, uh, it, you know, bounty missions. And uh, it's a really, really cool ship. But again, it's kind of, kind of useless to use solo, although at least you have some pilot weapons. However, the first alien ship we're gonna use this time is the um, Aopa Cartual, however you say this. So let's take this out. This one's a um, very light ship, probably the smallest and uh, weakest, I guess, of the alien fleet that I have. But it's a very, very unique ship, and it's a lot of fun to fly. There'll be uh, four ships we're going to look at and uh, use, and I'll show you all the components I have for them each time we bring a new one out. The majority of this is probably going to be just bounty hunting, uh, except for once we get to the last ship. Oh, I forgot to uh, show you the uh, other ships I bought. Uh, off the top of my head, I also got uh, the other Reliant ships, and uh, I'll have to... I'll take a look at the uh, the fleet next time we go back to a terminal. Sorry about that. Wish it was a little bit brighter out here, around uh, Everest Harbor, so you could get a better look. Just get closer to this thing. Very uh, interesting looking ship, especially just even just sitting here, it looks interesting, but just wait until we uh, actually take off and go into flight mode with this thing. Really, really cool looking. The cockpit is very unique too, and it's got these huge guns on it. I'll show you what they are in a minute. I've grown uh, to really, really prefer fixed weapons the more I've gotten experience with uh, combat and stuff. And we'll get a better look once we get out into space, but anyways. It's got this uh, really cool stair, stair set sure if you can see that, but <laughs> that's how it's supposed to look, apparently. Also, the uh, control surfaces, the, it's not got like a joystick, you know, a, it's not got like a stick or anything like that. It's these little, these little orbs. <laughs> All right. Weird alien voice going on. Let me just do this, overclock the power plant. Yeah, I have CF-447 Rhinos on it. Just overpower them. Oh wait, I can. All right, we'll just not even bother because they overheat real fast, but I will overclock two shields. Okay, so for components, now there's a lot of different ways you can build these ships. Um, tend to uh, pick my components based on PVE, uh, but I got an Atlas Quantum Drive. It's a great civilian quantum drive for getting across the system per, uh, fairly fast. Two Ultra Flow Size 1 coolers, JS300 Size 1 power plant, and a FR66 and Guardian Size 1 shield generator. And yeah, CF447 Rhinos. Just two weapons. Not gonna do any, like, ERTs with this or anything. Um, we don't have any HRT or VHRT bounties at the moment, so let's just go do one HRT. Just, uh, for starters. Okay, off we go. And when you go into flight mode, Oh, I'm flipping, hold on. It, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, we're good. You can see Thank the, you. uh, Please visit again. the whole thing flips up like this and it opens up like a flower or something. It's crazy looking. Guns go forward. Just completely different than what it looks like when it's sitting there on the pad. It's pretty awesome. Also, the alien ships have the coolest quantum travel ever. Quantum travel 
you can get past the lag. They all look a little bit different, but this is one of the coolest quantum effects I've seen. This one, and I especially like the quantum for the Defender, the Banu Defender, but really cool. It almost feels like you're not as going as fast, but you are. Quantum travel complete. I am missing, uh, I believe, one alien reproduction ship. Or actually, I'm not sure if the Talon is considered an alien ship. I don't know a lot about the Talon, but you can't buy the Talon in the game, so I don't have it. So we're not going to be doing that one. Wow, nice and close. Warden. It's got a really muted sound to it when it fires these. This guy even shot at me yet? Rip. Fast. And one down. Let's see here. Of course, that was only an HRT. Still don't have... Uh, everyone's out bounty hunting right now. It's the weekend. Let's just go wipe out this group MRT for right now. We'll do some tougher ones once we... Uh... Oh. Might as well. Gladius. Usually when I'm bounty hunting group bounties, I just take care of the bounties and then ditch. I don't usually go after the extras because... Just because. Oh, I forgot to get call to arms. Then uh, another Glanius. <laughs> Alright, let me move out of here. It doesn't have any missiles and it's only got the two weapons, so like I said, I'm not going to do anything super tough with it. But I can easily do VHRTs. Fortunately, we just... Oh, here we go. Group HRT. Well, I'll take it. The ones I do the most are the ERTs, the Extreme Risk, but um, I use an Anvil Hawk for that with scatter guns, not something like this, because uh, taking down hammerheads with scatter guns is the easiest for me. Such a weird looking thing. It actually handles really, really well in atmosphere too. It's very, very agile. Someone here in a cutty black. They probably already took it. There he is. Hey, buddy. This is my bounty. Go away. Contact. Valkyrie. Shooting at him? Oh, now it's after me. Contact. I want to accidentally shoot this guy. I'm trying to be mindful of there he is. All right. Okay, we're out of here. Hopefully, I didn't just steal his bounty. It does happen sometimes. Try not to do that. Didn't look like he was after that guy, so it's probably okay. Looks like we got two in one spot out here. These HRTs are pretty easy. And I just love the sound with these uh, these rhinos in this ship. This happens. Which one's my target? I can assume it's this one. Yep, yeah, okay. One thing that really irritates me though about the bounty hunting, especially with the VHRTs and especially the ERTs actually, you'll you'll always have one hammerhead in the group, which is fun to fight, and then uh, usually something else like a worm or a uh, Valkyrie. But they always throw um, hurricanes in there on ERT missions, and they're with the desync fighting AI, especially because I use scatter guns on ERTs, 
Hurricanes have got to be the most irritating thing in all of the game to fight because they're so glitchy. And with the desync and how nimble they are, the pip is just everywhere. Trying to get close and stay on them with scatter guns. Oh my god. But, uh, okay. I mean, they're, that's pretty much it. It's a solid little uh, bounty hunting ship. I have no problem doing VHRT groups with these and stuff. I haven't tried fighting anything like a, a hammerhead with it, and I'm not going to. But, um, yeah, it's a fun little ship. Not really a whole lot else uh, you would use this for, other than like PvP or something maybe, but uh, I'm not a PvP guy. So we're gonna head on back and pick up the next ship. So, uh, watch this. <laughs> it's, it's so nimble. It's a lot of fun to fly. Even the sounds when you slow down. I love the sounds of this thing. Okay, you go into landing mode. See it fold back down like this. Such a cool animation. Sound gets even more intense. It's like this weird growling sound when I when I thrust up. Now let's try auto landing with it. I don't think I've done that. Landing automated. <laughs> Pretty good. Landing complete. Landing uh, what the hell was that? Kind of landed sideways there. Okay. At a uh, 30k, of course, so gotta log back in. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is I don't have the uh, Aopa Nox, the uh, alien bike. I just uh, don't really like things like the dragonfly and stuff, so I'm, I didn't pick that one up. And there's really nothing you can do with them other than race around, you know, so not gonna include that one either. There is one other alien ship I've had in a video briefly before, but it's not uh, available to buy in the game, and that is the Asperia Glaive. I'm not sure if you can buy that one um, on the Pledge Store or not. Just figured I'd mention that because I have had it in a video before, but I do not have it available right now. So as I was saying before, I did buy the, uh, the Reliant Core, Core, whatever you want to call it, and the Tana. Uh, but anyways, the next one up is the Banu Defender. This one I really, really love. In fact, I use it all the time for bounty hunting. Again, I don't use it for ERTs because uh, I have NB NDBs on it, which I love, but uh, trying to kill a hammerhead with those is like pulling teeth. All right, we got some, uh, some light out here this time. Quick walk around of it. Very cool looking ship. Get a better look up there. I love the eye. Uh, the gear looks like feet or something. Got this interesting engraved gold skin on it mixed with this like carbon fiber looking thing. Got these weird lights on the front. I have no idea what they're for. And it's got uh, two cockpits. It uh, can be multi-crew, although I'm pretty sure each seat uh, has the exact same option, so I'm not sure why they have two. But anyways, ramp on the front. This one actually has a little bit of a cabin to it. It's got a uh, weapon rack for the uh, pilot, both pilot seats. It's got a couple beds, one on each side. Not a whole lot else. It's got this really cool organic look to it on the inside, though. I always fly from the left seat. It's very uh, simplistic looking on the inside. Clock the power plants, overpower the NDBs, block the shield. Okay, so as far as components go, I don't really use missiles much on light fires, but anyways, uh, same as the other one, Atlas Quantum Drive. It's pretty much what I use now as far as size one quantum drives go. 
two Ultraflow coolers, two JS-300 power plants, and the shield is a Sukaron, which is unique to some of these alien ships. Really, really good shield. It does have a really slow recharge time, but it has a huge health pool and extremely good ballistic resistance. The weapons, NDB-30s, all around, just four of them. I love these things. Although sometimes they accidentally uh, kill the pilot before they kill the ship and uh, gives you a crime stat, so that's kind of irritating, but it's kind of rare. Still no VHRT, give an ERT. We'll just do an HRT. It's okay. VHRTs pretty much go the same. They're uh, usually the same kind of ships. They're only marginally harder. Don't look around here. Also has a uh, cool... Hold on. Take up the... Uh, go into flight mode. Comes forward. Starts looking like a crab or something. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Also has a awesome quantum drive animation. A lot of cool sounds to it. Like I said, I use this one all the time. So long as I'm not going after ERTs, I use it all the time. Gotta love that stutter. I love the quantum in this one. That green effect is awesome. Quantum travel complete. I love it when I show up for these bounties and, um, okay, there we go. Have to wait for the asteroids to spawn so I don't run into invisible ones. Oh, Valkyrie again. So this thing, um, when you buy this thing stock, it comes with these weapons called Tachyon Cannons. And, uh, I tried using them, but they're, oh, they're, uh, gimbled, and they're absolutely horrible. I don't know if they're, like, bugged out or something. I think they are, but they suck. They're terrible. So, fixed NDBs work great on this thing. You can see that kind of weird texture on the uh, windscreen or the cockpit glass. In certain lighting conditions, it's kind of cool. Oop. Yeah, they um they still haven't really fixed the desync with the pip. Some of the flight is still really janky with these AI. Damn it! Wow, I heard that guy like who's in my ear. Attack on shields. Oop, there he goes. Weapons two hot. Usually I just bug out. If I'm, you know, just grinding money, but we'll just take care of these guys. These are right here. Stupid hurricanes. I, I hate fighting these things. Shit! Once you get within a, under a few hundred meters, they're incredibly irritating to fight, usually. Especially if you're using, uh, scatter guns. Okay. Another one. Slumpy. Back into quantum. I love this. See, my shields are still not recharging. I'm not sure if it puts it on hold in quantum. quantum the Sukaron is great, but when your shield goes down, you gotta get away because it takes a while to recharge. Usually it's good to pair up the Sukaron with something else, with a good um, down shield regen, but uh, can only fit one shield on this one. 
Now these NDBs are great, I love them, but the, the range isn't that great on them. You gotta get in within like 2,000 meters. And uh, they have a little bit of damage fall off, but it's not as extreme as the uh, attrition's as far as I know. I could just aim. Okay. Not gonna worry about the extras this time. This is usually what I do. I just take out the target and bug out. And if you're just trying to hurry through doing group bounties, it's really not worth your time, even if you have call to arms to uh, take care of the extras. Unless you, I mean, unless you're having fun doing it. But if you're trying to hurry, it's best just to hit your target and get out of there. You only get a, another thousand or, you know, somewhere around there for each extra target with call to arms. Another Valkyrie. Come on, die already. Damn it. There we go. Alright. Well, there you have it. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of difference in difficulty with the VHRTs from HRTs. It's mostly the same ships. Um, I haven't noticed any difference. I really like the Bondo Defender. It's uh, It feels like a really stable ship. I'm not sure how else to explain it. Some of the uh, the light fighters and stuff are really twitchy when it comes to aiming. The uh, defender, I guess it's technically probably a medium fighter, but uh, yeah, it, it feels really stable to use. Even if, you know, you half your screen is taken up by the ship, I uh, still really like it. Some of these alien ships definitely need reworks though. Like I said, the tachyon cannons this thing comes with are busted. The, uh, the HUD there, the UI, um, you know, the radar and all that needs an update. However, I don't think any of the alien ships I've flown need a rework more than the one I'm about to use. Which is a shame because it's my favorite looking alien ship. Okay, so the next one on our list is the Esperia Blade. This one is... Uh, like I said, it's my favorite looking one, but holy hells, it have some problems. This is the only ship I've bought so far that I kind of regret getting. I mean, I guess not really, because it's awesome looking, but it's not that useful to me, or hasn't been. We'll see how it fares this time. And this one was uh, the most expensive out of all the alien ships I bought. This was like 3.3 million or something, and it's got a lot of problems. I couldn't swap the weapons out on it. I guess the, the main problem with it, other than me not being able to change the weapons, is that uh, there's shield holes or something. Uh, it falls apart really easily, especially the wings, and that's not good because uh, you'll lose your weapons. You look at it here. Very interesting looking from the back again, really organic looking. Almost looks like it has a rib cage under it here. It's, it reminds me so much of like a Cylon ship, you know, Battlestar Galactica. I just love this thing. It's also got a very interesting uh, entry animation. Where it just folds down and you kind of just pilot this thing on your stomach as far as I can tell. Love the cockpit. It's a... Uh, the lights here can be a little distracting when you're flying, but anyways. I also love the UI color. That, uh, 
interesting looking red. So, let me show you what's... Oh, oh no, I can't get out. So it's got a bunch of size 1 missiles, put an Atlas drive on it, two Ultra Flows, uh, one JS-300 power plant, and it only has one shield generator and one power plant, so FR-66 shield. The weapons, it has the uh, Vanduul missile racks, and then it has Vanduul cannons. Uh, two of them are laser and two of them are plasma, I think. They're all cannons. It does all right uh, in combat, it's just that... Um, through what I'm gonna guess is shield holes, your wings fall off really easily. So it definitely needs some love. Overclock. I'm just gonna overclock everything. Actually, can you overpower these? Yeah, okay. Prefer to overpower weapons if I can, unless they're scatter guns, then I overclock them. Okay, let's take off. This one doesn't have a, uh, oh, it does. My bad. It has a little bit of an animation when you go out of landing mode. The uh, wings just kind of go back. Show you again in a minute. Yeah, when you uh, hit the landing gear, they uh, come forward. That comes down. Again. Back. Now it really looks like a Cylon Raider or something. But yeah, there's so much light going on in here that it's kind of distracting. Oh, great. Because of my armor, I can't see. Okay, well, this is the part where we get out of the thing in the middle of space so we can accept a mission. That's the problem with having the Citadel armor times. Here we go. Got it. Okay, I'm just gonna do another group. Uh, you know what, let's, we'll try a VHRT for that. I don't know how well this is gonna work with the ship, but we'll give it a go. I've only taken this thing out like once to um, go do uh, bounty missions with it. Or actually twice, yeah, because I thought it was a fluke the first time when I lost one of my wings almost immediately. It wasn't a fluke though. It also doesn't look like the um, the aiming reticle sits, or you know, the crosshair sits in the, the correct place of the uh, cockpit. Looks like it's too high. Okay, here goes nothing. Warden, again. I'm trying to remember. Alright, oh. I'm trying to remember how these weapons work. Got a little bit more range. This is weird alternating fire with them. And they overheat really fast. I probably shouldn't have even overpowered these, but... Because they just overheat so fast. But hey, got rid of him pretty fast. That actually went better than I thought it would. Someone's shooting at me. Let's get out of here before I lose a wing. It could definitely use, like, a second size 1 shield. I think that would be really beneficial. Usually the best for me with uh, light fighters is to use an FR-66 and a Guardian. Because the FR-66 is just great, but the uh, Guardian has a really good down regen rate. But when you just have one... Another Warden. What a surprise. At least it's not a hurricane. Always, yeah, I should probably get rid of the uh, overpower. So much overheating. Pretty good damage though, I guess better than I remembered. 
And I also haven't lost a wing yet. It's a miracle. Okay, let me just remove the, uh, doesn't want to let me click on the, uh, the MFD. That's nice. Okay, anyways, just have to deal with it. And another warden. Wow. Okay. It does a lot more damage than I remember. That went uh, a whole lot better than I'm used to for this. Another glorious 30k. Gotta love it. Okay, so we'll move on to the last ship in the list for today. This one's a bit different, so I'm just gonna go do one bounty with it, not a group. And then we're gonna go do something else with it. It's another I really, really like. Um, kind of has limited utility for me. It is good at fighting, but it's not as nimble as the other ones. But nevertheless, it is a awesome looking ship. That ship being the Hesperia Prowler dropship. Now these dropships are, they're obviously meant to carry a bunch of people and go, you know, drop them off for like ground operations and stuff like that. I don't have anyone to multi-crew with and uh, I mean, I heard another, uh, Star Citizen content creator mentioned, you know, what are you going to do? Take 12 of your friends or, you know, 20 of your friends and split a bunker mission 12 to 20 ways, you know? So uh, I'm not sure. Right now, dropship's not the most useful thing, but uh, this one can still fight really well. It's not, uh, it's not like the Valkyrie where you can, like, um, haul vehicles in it, but uh, it has better weaponry for the pilot than the Valkyrie does. And it is a wild looking ship. It's like a, it's like a space lobster <laughs> or something. I just, uh, it's so weird looking. You can see all the hatches it has for exit. It's got these awesome wings that when you're in landing mode, they're kind of like cover or something. I heard someone else mention that, that these are, could function as like cover for troops that drop out of the ship since the exit hatches are on the side. Get around to the lighted side. I really love the look of this thing. It's always a lot bigger than I think it is when I pull it out. It's got some big guns on it. Just uh, just really cool looking. Exit through the through the uh, lobster tail here, or enter rather. It's also got some like cover for like as you're exiting. Pretty cool. You go out that way. Coming in, you can see all the drop seats. We had a few of them in here. Up the middle. I think that's a weapon. Is that a weapon rack? I don't know. Really spooky looking when it's like powered down like this. More weapon racks here on the uh, side. Not sure if you can see that, but that's a ladder going up. This is the uh, co-pilot seat, which I think you can fly the ship from here, but I'm not sure why you would. So let's go up the second level. Really interesting ladder. There you go, just a little cabin up here with the uh, pilot seat. This thing has the coolest, this one in the Talon have the coolest cockpit animations ever. See this right now? Did I keep my light on? Hold on. Do not want to have a flashlight on when you're in the cockpit. Yeah, I did. See so yeah, how when you power it up. I love that. Okay. Uh, before we go anywhere, take a look at the components I put on it. Again, this is not maybe the optimal setup. It's just what I thought was best for what I do. So it's got a XL1 quantum drive, which is probably the best. In my opinion, two cool cores for the coolers, JS 400 power plant, and then it has two Sukarons, the shields. Really good. Now, I probably should swap one out for something that refills the shield pool faster, but for now, I'm just doing that. 
The weapons I put on it are two CF337s and two CF447 Rhino repeaters. Laser repeaters, but yeah. So we'll go kill something with this real quick and then we'll go do something else with it. Not gonna bother with um, a full group bounty right now and just do one. Singular VHRT and ERT bounties are over on the other side of the system around Crusader, so just do an HRT. Honestly, after fighting with fixed weapons so much now, I uh, kind of just don't like using gimbaled weapons much anymore. Now, obviously, they're more practical on a bigger ship, but again, really cool quantum animation. Another unique one. You can see uh, this thing flies, picks up the, uh, the arms. I'll show you the. Uh, hold on. Zoom out a little bit. I'll show you the animation. Pretty cool. I like it. Not gonna bother with overcharging and overpowering, or overclocking and overpowering. For right now, we're just doing one. Are you Valkyrie? All right. This thing doesn't have missiles on it. Not the most nimble thing ever either, so you kind of just gotta tank damage with it. Target friendly. There you go. Not bad. So, well, obviously I'm not gonna have a bunch of people in my ship and we're not gonna drop out like a drop ship. I figure we'll round this off by doing something you might do with a drop ship. Uh, of course, there's no bunker mission to actually go. You know, let's just go somewhere else. Been spending so much time around Hurston just grinding group bounties. For a the longest time I spent all of my time at, at Microtech until I found a better uh, money-making loop. Now I'm just always around Everest Harbor and Hurston. So let's go over to Microtech to do one of these. Look at that quantum <laughs> animation though. How cool was that? I still like the one on the, the Defender the most, that green quantum animation, but this one's pretty cool to look at it here. Just a really cool looking ship. Even if the tail looks a little bit goofy. Let's go do a bunker mission down on Microtech. It's been a while since I've done FPS combat. Well, since the last time I recorded one in a video. The only one we had available over at Hurston was a uh, uh, execution warrant, which is just going after one person. So, myself an excuse to get away from Hurston for a while. One other interesting thing is when you uh, when you roll, you can see the uh, the handle control stick here moving around. It's kind of cool. Moves the UI with it. Find a place to land. And let's just land down here in this little valley. Safe about it. Gear down. Probably gonna have to do a little bit of running. Actually, we can probably land right here. Ooh, this thing suddenly doesn't want to move. Doesn't like having its gear down. Hold on. I don't think the turrets have spawned in yet. Alright. Gear down. Drop her right here. Maybe not the best landing spot, but it'll do. Man, I love coming to Microtech so much. Such a nice planet. I can't wait till they put in the water and stuff like that. All right, Power down. Awesome animation. So we'll say we were one of the people in one of these drop seats here. 
you know, you land, get out of the seat, watch your gun, and you're out. Then you have cover. If I would have landed somewhere level, that would have been correct. You'd have different levels of cover. Wanted to shoot from behind it or whatever. Just getting you a, a look at it here on the planet from outside. Not sure why the dust happens, even though the ship's off. Oh yeah, I also got some, not that this is really relevant, but I got some of this armor. Citadel armor, the special edition that you get at uh, Port Tressler. It's white. You can actually, I didn't know this, you can actually get a maroon red version also at uh, Grimhex. Anyways, I'm not sure if they um, moved the uh, sp special edition Citadel and fortifier green armor since Levski is gone now, but uh, I actually haven't looked up if they've done anything, if they like moved the ship shop, because uh, I'm fairly certain Levski had some ships you couldn't buy anywhere else. I wonder if they added those to a uh, the existing stores or if they're not available to buy. I don't know, I haven't looked it up yet. If you know, let me know in the comments what happened to the uh, Teach's ship shop stock. I cannot get enough of running around on Microtech. I love it. I think I probably should have tried to land closer. That was a little bit far away. The nice thing about the Valkyrie for a dropship is that um, you can haul a uh, Ursa rover or anything smaller in the back. You can even fit a uh, snub fighter in there. So even if you land a ways away, you have a way to get up to these things quicker. Still, uh, nothing really remarkable to talk about with FPS combat. It's uh, still hit or miss whether the AI is going to be completely stupid or not. Oh. Lag. Oblivious. Oh, hello. Oh, he glitched back. Great. He actually got a shot off. His gun is scared. It's trying to uh, escape. And there you have it. Nothing uh, really different than every other time I've done one of these. But, you know, if they make more elaborate uh, bunker missions and stuff in the future, Maybe a big group of people in that drop ship coming to do them would be something that you would do. Okay, well, I guess that'll do it for now. I've showed you uh, all the alien ships that I have and gone around and done a bit of stuff with all of them. The uh, Asperia Blade actually worked out a lot better than I did the first few times I used it. This is probably just a fluke, though. But, uh, yeah, I like them. Some of them definitely need some love and some reworkings, but um, some of them have kind of limited use, like the Prowler. But I like them. I'm looking forward to when they put some, like, the Talon and the Glaive into the game where we can actually buy it with Alpha UEC and stuff. I'll definitely want to check those out. But, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this one, so I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.